the keyless Honda ADV350, an adventure-style scooter, harbors a liquid-cool 330cc, four-stroke single-cylinder engine pushing out 28.8 horses at 7,500rpm and 31.5Nm of torque at 5,250 rpm through a dry centrifugal clutch, a CVT gearbox and a belt final drive. The fuel tank holds 11.7 litres of fuel and with a claimed consumption of 30 kilometres per litre, you're looking at a potential range of 351 kilometres before you make the call of shame for someone to get you a can of petrol. We got about 28 kilometers per liter with mixed riding. The front of the machine sees a 15-inch cast aluminium rim and the rear, 14 inches. Both come stock with a set of Mazzler Karu Street tires. Brakes on the front is a single 256 mm roto paired with a single two-piston floating Nissin caliper and for the rear, a single 240mm roto packed with a single one-piston floating Nissin caliper. The rider is assisted by a two-channel ABS and Honda Selectable Torque Control. Honda Selectable Torque Control. Traction control lah. Traction control can be turned off. Suspending the Honda ADV350 is a non-adjustable upside-down Showa front fork and dual non-adjustable Showa shocks in the rear. Shocks on an adventure machine without adjustability? Never mind, we have a solution. An LCD dash provides the rider with a ton of information. But put TFT la, nicer wa. If you want to ride with your phone on a bar, we see a USB-C power outlet installed in an unlockable glove compartment. So get yourself a Peak Design phone mount at TripleTree.com. It's got a magnetic lock, so you don't have to fiddle with mounting your phone and it's got a built-in vibration damper. Check out our video where Amos mounted a 12-inch tablet on his dash with the system. Honda claims that two full-face helmets can fit into the 48-litre under-seat storage. Okay, we try. Wow, can fit leh! Still got space! Good job! The separator is a nice touch, but we feel that it's the first thing we will misplace. A four-position, manually adjusted windshield comes as standard on the ADV350. A full LED lighting kit comes as standard. An LED headlight, an LED tail light, and LED signal lights. General servicing is every 12,000 km with 1.5 liters of engine oil with an oil filter replacement. Major servicing is every 24,000 km with a valve clearance inspection and belt and roller replacement. Gear oil should be changed every two years with 170 ml of gear oil. Amos is 1.84 meters tall with a seat height of 795 mm and a curb weight of 188 kilos. Let us show you how he looks on the bike. He's got an upright, relaxed posture. With Mark coming in as a pillion, he felt that it was very spacious and the pillion seat stupidly comfortable. At a combined weight of 170 kilos, the dual non-adjustable shocks bottom out on every bounce. Not okay. An upgrade is definitely needed if you're about our size or if you want better performing shocks. Remember I mentioned that we have a solution? Get your Pro Fender from JS Auto or other authorized dealers. Links are in the description. The turning radius of the bike is average for its class. In our opinion, the Honda ADV350 rode quite well. Balance was good, the engine was smooth, and the brakes bitey, just the way we like it. Mark mentioned that he didn't quite appreciate the shocks. He felt the bumps on the road in his neck and back. Which brings us to a question. Why no adjustability? At bare minimum, preload adjustability on the front and rear. Progressive springs can only do so much, especially when the rider doesn't fall between estimated weight limits of the stock springs. We really like the rider and pillion seat. It's super wide and comfy. The storage underneath takes the cake. So big! really fits two full-face helmets, 
so much space. Then, there's also the handlebar. The fact that Honda has decided to use a clamp means you get the choice of changing your bar to your preferred length and bend. The handlebar didn't hit our knees at U-turns, but bar rises are available if your legs are longer than Amos's. One of the biggest missed opportunities we found has to be the windshield. Adjusting the position has to be done with both hands. A motorized one. Better right. At 12,500 Singapore dollars before COE and insurance, we expect better parts. The exhaust was quite quiet. Let's have a listen. Of course, aftermarket options are available, but be sure to check with your local authorities for legal limits. We didn't notice any heat at Stop Go City or highway riding. Very okay! But it does get quite warm in the understate storage. Overall, calling the ADB 350 an adventure scooter. To us, it's marketing hype. While it can do dirt roads just like any other machine, it lacks the suspension travel and ground clearance to do anything more. For the lack of a better word, adventurous. But she'll make a good choice for a newer rider. Since it's a scooter with a CVT gearbox, power delivery is very manageable with no surprises. Twist and go. More experienced riders can expect a relaxing, reliable daily rider that's more than capable to take on your weekly breakfast rides. We'd like to thank Jay's Auto for making this review possible and Chris for allowing us to review his machine. But as with all our reviews, they do not have control over our content, allowing us to bring you true and unbiased opinions. With that, I'm Winston and see you on the road.